the video lesson. So this is again on the economic issues topic, but this then relates to economic policies. There's a lot of overlap between these two topics. And this is looking at the Phillips curve, which identifies a relationship between inflation and unemployment. So we're going to look at that relationship and can we have both low inflation and uh, low unemployment, which would be ideal, like our uh, bloke up there playing the, is that maybe a cello, that we want uh, 2 to 3% inflation. That's our RBA target. We want sustainable GDP growth, which is between 3 to 4% usually for Australia, and low unemployment. We want all these things humming along and we want them all at the same time. So the Phillips curve is shown here. On our vertical axis, we've got inflation and the horizontal axis is unemployment. And it shows us that as unemployment uh, reduces, inflation rises. Inflation, when uh, it was a Kiwi, uh, Phillips, a professor uh, from New Zealand, Phillips, who came up with this, identified this relationship in his research, looking at the data, he firstly looked at it in terms of wage prices, that uh, when unemployment was lower, wage prices were higher or wage inflation was higher. But we can extrapolate this or take this out to look at uh, inflation in, in prices and CPI as well, because higher uh, inflation in wages, higher wage inflation is going to mean higher prices as well. So it shows an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. Lower unemployment means higher inflation. Lower unemployment is beneficial because it means more people in an economy have jobs to earn an income, improve their quality of living, and they can contribute to the economy and its productivity and higher GDP and economic growth. So this is a good thing, lower unemployment. But as unemployment reduces, we start to see that increase in inflation. So this is likely to occur because lower unemployment is associated with higher demand, higher aggregate demand, so higher demand for goods and services. And this is going to drive up wages and prices in the economy as people bid up prices because they've got more money to spend. Businesses will recognize this and they'll raise their prices. So when more people have jobs and an income, they've got more money to spend and they're contributing to higher demand. High demand bids up the prices and leads to higher inflation. So that's our relationship there. So Oaken's law, which we remember, also tells us that higher production and output means a lower rate of unemployment and vice versa. Higher unemployment is associated with lower GDP, lower economic growth and output. So we can see we've got a trade-off and this needs to be considered by uh, a policymakers. So for Australia, for our, our monetary po policy conducted by the RBA and our fiscal uh, policy conducted by the Treasury, they need to understand this Phillips curve and identify this trade-off between the maintenance of full employment, as we see set out in, the, uh, in, in our goals for the Australian economy, especially if we just take this excerpt, this is straight from the RBA's website uh, from the Reserve Bank Act. Their main goals are the stability of the currency of Australia. So not just our exchange rate, but this was also referring to uh, inflation. We want stable inflation and our expectation for that, we remember is two to 3%. They wanna keep it between that target band of two to 3% CPI. Maintenance of full employment. Remember this doesn't mean necessarily zero unemployment where absolutely everyone has, uh, has jobs but this is uh, essentially at the Nairu, so at the non-accelerating inflation rate uh, level of unemployment, so where we're not gonna see increased inflation. At this point, it's estimated to be roughly 5% um, unemployment. So there's not gonna be cyclical unemployment at that rate, uh, which means there won't be people losing jobs because of an economic downturn or low economic growth but there's going to be structural unemployment there that can't be avoided. So it's not going to be zero uh, on inflation. Uh, zero, sorry, unemployment on inflation. So CPI 2 to 
and full employment, we can see looking at the Phillips curve that we can't have both super low unemployment and low inflation. The last one, of course, economic prosperity and welfare of the people of Australia, which comes through economic growth. Economic growth and GDP is the main uh, kind of relation we see to development and quality of life and um, like our, if we look at our human development index and stuff like that. Uh, so they need to understand this trade-off and they need to uh, identify what goal is more important at the time. What are they trying to achieve? Because if they try and uh, reduce inflation, by uh, they're going to potentially see a change in unemployment that's less beneficial. So let's look at the relationship together and we'll try and keep this short. So during the mining boom, we've, up here we've got inflation and unemployment rate. Through the mining boom period here, these roughly line up. We can see uh, as unemployment decreases, because more people are uh, picking up jobs, we can see lower unemployment and higher inflation. Then when the GFC hits and unemployment rises, inflation takes a dive. So this also is an example of that relationship between inflation and unemployment. So expansionary monetary policy after the GFC would aim to stimulate aggregate demand. It would help reduce unemployment levels, but it's also going to start to cause inflation again. As we lower unemployment, as we reduce unemployment, we're going to see inflation start to rise up that curve. And then lastly, what about stagflation? So this is a short part of uh, the topic as well that relates. This is uh, particularly from that 1970s period that we've, we've talked about in class in the US of high inflation, high unemployment and low output uh, and economic growth in the United States. This was known as stagflation. It was uh, especially brought up by Milton Friedman, who's a Nobel Prize winning ec economist. So he used this to disprove the Phillips curve and said that there isn't a relationship between inflation and unemployment. If we've got that period that doesn't fit our curve, there wasn't, so there was high unemployment and there was high inflation. So this is when, this is now referred to as a short run inflation, curve, uh, short run Phillips curve, uh, our, our relationship between inflation and unemployment. And he has identified the long run Phillips curve and just simply that in the long run, in the long run, there isn't a relationship between inflation and unemployment. And that's all we need to know so far about this at the, at the moment is we, we can uh, look at that further uh, on in the course. Oh, that doesn't need to be text there. Uh, but just to wrap up, Lower unemployment means higher inflation. That's the relationship we need to understand. And then as we go into economic policies, that we need to consider that the, we've got these conflicts uh, between our goals, between our inflation of 2 to 3%, our target band, which say if that's somewhere here, how is that going to relate to unemployment? And if we reduce unemployment, we're going to see an increase in inflation and we've got that trade-off there. All right, thanks for listening. See you next time.